So we're going to look at what actually happens to DNA as a cell prepares to divide. Because this is what DNA sort of looks like when your cell is in interphase. It looks like a giant bowl of cooked spaghetti, where every piece of spaghetti is a, a double helix of DNA. Okay? So this is what the cell does in interphase. And it makes a lot of sense, even though these strands look really tangled, they are actually individual strands. It makes a lot of sense that if DNA is copying itself and, and genes are being copied to make proteins, to do this, that, or the other, that the strands not be all knotted together or whatever. But if this cell was to divide in half right now, it would be really hard to split that DNA evenly, okay? So we evolve a specific way of compacting our DNA. We know how many, and, and we actually know what this word is. How many chromosomes do we have? Human beings have 46 chromosomes. But really, what is a chromosome? What is it? It's DNA strands. It's really long strands of DNA, and we have 46 of them. So this big bowl of what looks like cooked spaghetti is actually 46 strands of straightened hair, let's say, okay? As opposed to it being super, 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 super duper spirally curly. This is all nice and straight and all mushed up into one big ball where individual little bits can be copied if they need to. Now, once a cell starts to, you know, realize that it has to divide, a bunch of things start to happen inside the nucleus. Collectively, these DNA strands are known as chromatin material. Chromatin material is nothing more than just untangled DNA. But a cell cannot split this evenly in half. So it does what we like to do best. It organizes itself. And it puts the DNA in a bunch of specific little compartments. It's almost like it has a bunch of Tupperware for every one of these actual chromosomes. And the way that the cell has evolved to package it, to package its DNA so that it can divide evenly, is it forms... From the chromatin material, it forms chromosomes. And a chromosome is nothing more than a really spiraled, spiraled, spiraled on top of itself, super coiled chunk of DNA. Where every one of these spirals is actually a, a double helix itself. It's super spiraled. Okay, and a chromosome sits there and it kind of looks like an X. Whereas these two strands, this strand right here in all somatic cells, all right, I'm actually going to draw this like this. Now these two strands are identical to one another. Collectively, this is one chromosome, okay? These two strands are bound together right here by a protein called the centromere. Each individual strand in a chromosome, so here we've got one strand and we've got the other strand. These are sister chromatids and they are identical to one another. They have the exact same DNA. They're copies of one another, okay? You have 46 chromosomes like this. So in any one cell, if I draw a really big cell here, when a cell actually goes to divide, that DNA, which looks like chromatin material here, 
supercoils itself to make a bunch of chromosomes. Chromosomes are only visible when the cell divides. As soon as the cell is done dividing and it goes back into interphase, the DNA is going to unwind itself and become a big mesh or mix up again of chromatin material. Okay? So you have 46 of these chromosomes. So if we look at the actual cell cycle, all right, we start off with one actual cell. So if we look at the steps of mitosis, we're going to talk about what happens. Okay? Right now we have a cell which is doing its normal cell thing in interphase. And a cell will remain in interphase as long as it possibly can, because it's doing its cell thing. Because if it's always dividing, cells that constantly divide take a tremendous amount of energy. Okay, that, that's why people who have cancer are very tired, because they're drained of energy, because those cells, the cancerous cells, are continuously dividing. It's a huge energy drain on the system, okay? Now, interphase is all great. Everyone's happy. And then this cell gets a message or figures out that it has to divide. So it enters the first phase of cellular division. And that first phase is called prophase. And the cell, okay, I assume these are the same size, the cell starts to lose its actual nucleus. It starts to break apart. All of the other organelles go to the outside ends of the cell. So things like your mitochondria, your endoplasmic reticulum, your ribosomes, all of that stuff, your water vacuoles, they all get pushed to the extremities because they're not important for cellular division. They will evenly divide themselves later. All right, they'll make sure that there's enough water vacuoles in both cells and mitochondria and whatever. But the most important thing in, my, in mitosis is even cellular division of nuclear material. Chromosomes, you want to make sure you divide them 50-50 because if you don't, the two daughter cells will not survive. We start to see that this supercoiled DNA appears and we start to get these actual chromosomes. I'm only going to draw three because I'm not going to waste my time drawing 46. So we're going to show you what happens to three chromosomes through mitosis. So this is prophase. And by the time prophase is done, there is no longer a nucleus. Okay, it's disintegrated, all the bits that made up the nucleus are all in the extremities of the cell. The nucleus will reform later on when it needs it, okay? Now, in order to actually evenly divide, we can't start splitting these chromosomes up when some are on this side of the cell and some are on the other. So what the cell actually does is the chromosomes just know to line themselves up in a straight line, which we call the equator of the cell. And in animal cells, we have a specific organelle that plant cells do not have. They're called centrioles, and they kind of look like little T's. And they're actually, what they do is they go to the extremities of the cell, the poles of the cell, and they kind of make these lines of proteins going clear across the cell. They look like clotheslines. And each chromosome has its own clothesline. Okay, that clothesline is called a spindle fiber. Now, you'll notice how every one of those chromosomes lines up right at the equator of the cell. Okay, this is called metaphase. They could line up this way, they could line up that way, this way, this way, it doesn't matter. They will line up in a straight line. And then it gets interesting. Okay, then we are going to start to see, once we have them all evenly lined up, we are going to start to see that the actual shape of the cell changes. Okay, it brings up, it, it kind of takes on this oval shape. 
and you've got your centrioles at each pole, and you've got your spindle, and then you've got your chromosomes. And what ends up happening, I'm not going to draw the chromosomes as an X anymore. So when we look at what ends up happening in anaphase, they end up getting pulled to the opposite ends of the cell. Now each of these sister chromatids, remember, is totally identical to one another. And I'm going to erase the actual spindle in the middle here because it doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of like they're attached, the chromatids are attached by a rope and the centrioles are pulling them closer and closer. So in anaphase, not only does the cell get longer, all right, because it's going to prepare to actually divide, but the actual chromosomes split at their centromere to give you sister chromatids that get pulled to the each end of this cell, to each pole where the centrioles are. So after anaphase, we start to see a furrow appear. And a furrow is kind of like a dent, okay? This is also known as cleavage. That's where it comes from. We start to see this pinching in of, cent uh, of the actual cytoplasm. So it's starting to get narrower and narrower, and it'll eventually split into two, okay? And we see that the actual sister chromatids are on opposite sides now, full on. They are totally separate from one another. We also see that the nucleus in each of these cells starts to reappear, okay? Around the actual sister chromatids. And then cytokinesis will occur to give you two smaller but genetically identical sister chromatids inside, and these are two daughter cells, okay? And each of these cells will then revert back into interphase, okay? What ends up happening here, now cytokinesis does not have its own, you know, place in the mitosis division, it's the end result of mitosis. It's the actual division of cells. So after cytokinesis occurs, we have identical daughter cells. And those daughter cells will then go back into uh, interphase. And it's during the interphase that they will actually copy their sister chromatids, because right now they're just one half of a chromosome. They will actually work to copy that so that when it's time for that cell to divide, again, it will have full chromosomes. And that happens during interphase. It happens, we'll notice that if we look at the first image of cellular division, we'll see that the green arrow of interphase is divided into three chunks, G1 phase, S, and G2 phase. Okay, it occurs during the S phase of interphase, where this chromatid replicates itself to make a photocopy or a double. And that is how the vast majority of your cells in your body replicate one another. They replicate one another asexually through mitosis.